At the end of this video, you will be able to solve a question like this. Hi everyone, you are welcome to Math and Physics with David and in today's lesson, we are going to be looking at swords. What is a sword? A sword is a root that cannot be simplified to remove the root or simply put, sword is the square root of a number that is not a perfect square. For instance, the square root of 2. 2 is not a perfect square. 3 is not a perfect square. And 5 here is not a perfect cube because this is cube root of 5. We are going to be looking at a few examples quickly. Let's talk about how to simplify sorts. For instance, we have square root of 50. For you to simplify the square root of 50, we need two numbers. One must be a perfect square and the other one must be a number that is not a perfect square and that does not have a perfect square inside it. What are these two numbers? We can use 25 and 2. These are the two numbers that we can use because 25 is a perfect square and 2 is not a perfect square and does not have perfect square inside of it. We need to multiply these two numbers together and then split them like this. Let them have their own square root. At the end of the day, we are going to have the square root of 25, which is 5, and the square root of 2, which is square root of 2. Now let's talk about combining like sorts. In this example, 3 root 2 plus 5 root 2 are like sorts because root 2 and root 2 are the same. Now, if they have the same square root, all you need to do is pick what you have behind them, add the square coefficient together, and pick one of these sorts, which is 3 plus 5, which is 8, and then one of the square roots, which is square root of 2. Another example. In this example, we have square root of 3, and we also have square root of 3, which means we can just pick one of these square roots, and then pick what you have at the back, which is 15, minus what you have at the back here, which is 10. So at the end of the day, we are going to have 15 minus 10, which is 5, and then root 3. In this example, we have square root of 7 and square root of 3. So all you have to do is collect the like terms, let the ones with square root of 7 be together, and the ones with square root of 3 also be together. So with the ones with square root of 7, when you combine them, all you need to do is um, 6 plus 9, which is 15, then 15 minus 11, which is 4. And of course, they have the same square root of 7, so just pick one of them. So that is for square root of 7. Now we're going to combine the ones with square root of 3. So in this case, minus 2 minus 4 is going to give you minus 6. And of course, square root of 3, square root of 3, you pick one of them. So at the end of the day, you bring your 4 root 7 and then minus 6 root 3 together. So your answer is 4 root 7 minus 6 root 3. We are going to be talking about multiplying sorts. How do you multiply sorts? Let's take these examples. If you want to multiply square root of 3 and square root of 5, all you need to do is pick one square root and multiply the numbers you have inside the square root. So you're going to have square root of 3 times 5, which is going to give you square root of 15. In this case, all you have to do is multiply what you have at the back of the square root first, which is 3 times 5, 15. Then square root of 2 times 2, which is square root of 4. 3 times 5 is 15, square root of 4 is 2. Or simply put, if you have square root of 2 and square root of 2, all you have to do is just pick what you have inside of this, which is just 2. So in this example, all you have to do again is 2 times 5, which is 10. Then square root of 3 times 12, all right, which is going to give you um, square root of 36. As you can see, 2 times 5 is 10. We're multiplying what you have at the back. 2 times 5 is 10. And again, um, square root of 3 times square root of 12 is going to give you square root of 36. And the answer is 6. So you're going to multiply your result together now. 10 times 6, which is 60. Now, 
At this point, we're going to be talking about rationalizing denominators. This is where students find uh, most difficult. All right, so when you have a question like this, in sorts, we don't like to have our denominator in a sort form. So we prefer to have it in a non sort form. So how do you evaluate this? How do you simplify this? So as you can see, we have to multiply the entire question by this denominator here. So you have 5 over root 3 times the entire root 3 over root 3 itself. Now, root 3 over root 3 is still going to give you 1. So there's no, it does not make any difference. All right? It doesn't change the identity. It doesn't change what we have here. 5 times root 3 is going to give you 5 root 3. And square root of 3 times square root of 3 is going to give you 3. Like I said earlier, because root 3 times root 3 is going to give you root 9. and eventually root 9 is going to give you 3. So let's look at this next example. When you see a question like this, the first thing you have to do is find the conjugate of this denominator. And the conjugate is just for you to reverse the sign. Okay, the, the opposite of um, negative is positive. So all you have to do is multiply this entire question with the conjugate of the denominator. Okay, so this is the question itself. What we are doing here is multiplying the entire question by the conjugate of this denominator, which is 2 plus root 5 over 2 plus root 5. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times root 5 is 3 root 5, because we have an invisible 1 at the back of this um, root 5. So 3 times 1 is 3. So for instance, if you have 4 root 5 here, it's going to be 3 times 4, which is 12. Then it's going to be 12 root 5. But in this case, we have an invisible 1 at the back of root 5. So 3 times 1 is 3. So you have 3 root 5. So let's go to this. In this case, there are two ways you can do this. You can use this identity, which is a squared um, minus b squared. So if you expand a squared minus b squared, you're going to get a minus b, a plus b. Alright, so when you see a question like this, a minus b, a plus b. Okay, so the first one is going to be your a, which is 2, and the second one, which is root 5, is going to be your b. So a squared, which is 2 squared, root 5 squared. Okay, so a squared minus b squared. So eventually, 2 squared is 4, and root 5 squared is 5. How did we get 5? Because um, the square here is going to cancel the square root. So 4 minus 5 is minus 1. So at the end of the day, you are going to put the result of the numerator, which is 6 plus 3 root 5, over the result of the denominator, which is minus 1. Now, you are going to divide individually by minus 1. So 6 over minus 1 is actually minus 6. Now this is plus 3 root 5 over minus 1. It's going to give you minus 3 root 5 because plus over minus or minus over plus is going to give you minus. But if it is minus over minus, you're going to get plus. Alright? So this is what you're going to get. This is your final answer. 